Hello and welcome to Hollywood Headlines. I'm your host, Kamari Clark, and on tonight's episode we are going to be talking about the latest news in Hollywood, starting with the SAG Awards. Hollywood Headlines starts right now. Before we get into the show, I would like to take a moment to thank Brianna McHugh for being today's guest. The award shows just keep on coming, huh? The SAG Awards were held this weekend exclusively on Netflix on the 24th, honoring the best in movies and television shows of the past year. Oppenheimer won the most awards in film with Best Actor going to Killian Murphy and Best Supporting Actor going to Robert Downey Jr. The Bear on Hulu won the most awards in television with Jeremy Allen White and Ayo Adebiri winning Best Male and Female Actresses respectively in a comedy series. Other no notable awards throughout the night include Lily Gladstone from Killers of the Flower Moon winning Best Female Actor for film and Pedro Pascal winning Best Actor in a Drama Series. Brianna. Did you watch the SAG Awards on Netflix? I did not. No. But I did catch the highlights. I, yeah. I was busy. So yeah. I, I saw that the Oppenheimer like pretty much swept, which wasn't surprising. There, it was like the movie of the summer. Yeah. So, but I was personally happy for the bear. So was I. Yeah. Big bear fans here. Our <laughs> love for the show. Yeah. You just recently watched it, right? I did, yeah. yes. Yeah. I started watching it after the first season came out. Okay. And then was ready to go for the premiere. Right. Love it so much. But you're a brand new fan. I am, yes. Yeah. I, I binge watched it uh, in like two nights. Two nights. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the best time of your life. It was. It was any, stressful. Any surprise winners that you saw from this award show? Um, not really. I wasn't surprised by Mission Impossible winning Best Stunt. Yeah. Or like uh, Killers of the Flower Moon getting awards. Have you seen that? I haven't. Me neither. But I heard it was it was good. We need to. It's three hours. I know. <laughs> I know. And Oppenheimer's long too. Yeah, I didn't see Oppenheimer either. You didn't. <laughs> I saw it twice in theaters. I okay. loved it. But I tried to sit through it a third time with my mom, and she was like, I can't do it. Right. I can't watch it again. It's, it's a commitment. Yeah, it I is. Mean, I just don't think I'm ready to make that commitment That's yet. okay. We'll do it together. <laughs> okay. Okay, Sounds good. like a plan. It sounds <laughs> like a plan. <laughs> Rumors have spread about Only Murders in the Building co-stars Brian Ford and Meryl Streep dating. In season four of the show, the two played love interests, which sparked these rumors. Short and Streep were seen leaving a dinner together they had with friends on Wednesday, February 21st. Bill May heard jokes about the gossip on his Club Brandon podcast, and Martin Short said, quote, We're not a couple, we are just very close friends, end quote. Short was married to actress Nancy Dolman from 1980 until her death from ovarian cancer in 2010. Meryl Streep was confirmed to be separated from her husband of 45 years, Don Gummer. Sources say that during the dinner, there was lots of laughing and having fun. Brianna, do you think that they're actually dating, or is it just crazy rumors? I think they're probably just friends. Yeah. They did a whole season together. Yeah. I, I mean, friends are allowed to go out to, to dinner. You're right. <laughs> they You're they right. don't have to automatically be dating. I'm not, okay, don't quote me on this. I'm not sure about their return on the show, but maybe they're chatting, you know, um, the project. Did because you watch Only they're Murders? They're co-workers. I did the first two seasons. So you haven't seen the third season? I haven't seen the third. Um, so they, they do become love interests in the third season. Yeah. Spoilers. Um, but, I, you know, I, can't, I couldn't tell you if she's going to come back or not. I don't remember right. how it ended. Right. So, <laughs> so maybe they're just chatting yeah. Only Murders. They're just friends. They were laughing. They're Old having fun. Old people are allowed to be friends. Old people. <laughs> Old people <laughs> can go to dinner. <laughs> they, they don't have to be dating. But if they were... I wouldn't be. I'd about support it. it. Be, support that's it. my Tom Dea. Is it? <laughs> yes. That's a hot. Are you take. kidding? That's your Tom Dea. Yes. I love them together. Your old Tom Dea. <laughs> Tom Dea of the previous generation. <laughs> yeah, Tom okay. Dea for Gen Xers. <laughs> I understand. I understand. When we come back from the break, we'll be talking about the beloved daytime talk show host allegedly gone missing. Hollywood headlines will be right back. <laughs> Wendy Williams is missing. Controversy surrounding the whereabouts of the former daytime talk show host has led to the release of a multi-part Lifetime docuseries titled Where is Wendy Williams? 
The TV personality has been largely out of spotlight since the cancellation of her self-titled talk show in June of 2022. Williams' management team has announced that she is currently in a treatment facility after a diagnosis of primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia. Since its release, the series has been claimed to be both explo exploitative and invasive. According to Williams' team, the final product does not depict what was previously agreed upon. All four of the released episodes focus on the darker periods of Williams' life, including the final moments of her talk show and her difficulties with alcohol addiction. Williams' legal guardian has since filed a lawsuit against Lifetime and parent company A&E Television Networks. As of today, the producers have not responded for commenting. Brianna, have you seen any clips from this documentary? I don't think I ha I might have. Like yeah? on TikTok, mm -hmm. I, I, I saw the comments from like producers saying that they didn't know that she had dementia at the time. Right. But I don't think, I haven't, I haven't watched it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a couple of clips. Okay. I've seen, it's really dark. Is it? It is, and it's like, it's heartbreaking. And you would think, like, if she's in her treatment center right now, posting four episodes about where she is. Right. Not a good look, but I understand where the lawsuit comes from. So, like, they skewed it to make it yeah. seem like it was more darker than it was? Yeah. Or, like, they portrayed stuff that she didn't want to be shown? Right. So, <laughs> my, my interpretation is that she had agreed upon, like, a docu-series about her life, mm -hmm. explaining, like, her talk show, and then her struggles with addiction, and then post-addiction and where she is now. But instead, it was more like, oh, Wendy Williams is not doing okay. Oh. And she did not agree upon that. So her team was like, oh, this is not, we did not say that this was cool. Figure right. it out. And then they wanted to stop it after two episodes being released. They released all four. Right. That's awful. That's how I feel. Yeah. That's terrible. Yes. She should <laughs> sue them. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a lawsuit happen. She deserves to sue them. Yeah, I agree. Lifetime and mm -hmm. A&E. Yeah. Did they like say, were they the ones who released that she had dementia? Or was no. that her? So then her team did it after. Oh, okay. After the show was released. Got you. I know. It's weird timing. I agree. We come to this place for three new Nicole Kidman ads. AMC Theaters is set to release a couple of new pre show Kidman led ads as part of their We Make Movies Better campaign. This campaign beckoned movie fans to return to the theater and enjoy luxurious amenities and state-of-the-art technology following the COVID-19 lockdown. The iconic promotion featured Nicole Kidman wearing a pinstripe pantsuit, saying iconic lines like, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. The 60-second promo has garnered a cult-like following, spawning viral memes, Halloween costumes, and even an SNL spoof. Beginning on the first day of March, moviegoers can now witness the theatrical debut of the new 30-second ad, as well as the two never-before-seen versions of the original pre-show advertisement. Although the clips mirror the original ad in many ways, eagle-eyed fans will notice the new version showcases newer films like Elvis and Avatar The Way of Water. Brianna, do you like the original ad? I do. You know it? Yeah. You know it by heart. I, uh, <laughs> 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 begin, we come to this place for magic. Yep. We come to AMC theaters to laugh, to cry, to care. And then after that, it gets a little fuzzy. fuzzy. <laughs> Everyone, Nicole Kidman on the set of Hollywood headlines. Can yeah. you believe that? I, I love it. I think it's iconic. I loved every single meme that I saw. Yeah. I would have been her for Halloween. I mean. You have this year. You're so right. And three new ads are coming out. I don't know. There's some stuff coming about that the Willy you Wonka experience. You're right. Yeah, that, the unknown, that could be the new look for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> okay. we'll, have to, we'll have to come back to this episode. Yeah. We'll see. But do you like that? I do like the ad. Okay, good. I see AMC isn't near me right. at home, but Regal. I have been a few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have seen it. Right. And I love her outfit. <laughs> I, if anyone's it's a saying that it's not, yes. Yeah. She eats up. She does. I, I first. But do you prefer the AMC or the Regal one that they got rid of? AMC. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I kind of liked cringing at the Regal. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I would go to the bathroom then. I'd go get really? more popcorn. Yeah. I thought it was fun to make fun no. of. But like, I wait to see Nicole Kidman. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Will you see the new ones in theaters? Like, are you going to go? I'm definitely going to go to the theaters and see the new ones. Would you like, go to see the ads or go to see a movie? Um, <laughs> both. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to not go to see a movie. Right. But I, I look forward to seeing the new ads. Me as well. <laughs> When we come back from the break, we'll be doing our very own Hollywood Headlines Family Feud style Oscar predictions. Hollywood Headlines will be right back. We are just about 10 days out from the event of the year for people who don't go outside. The Oscars! The award show airs on March 10th and Hollywood Headlines will cover all the winners the, 
week following Hollywood's biggest night. Until then, we will be playing a game titled Popular Predictions where you have three questions and you'll have to guess what the most popular answer was for certain categories of the Oscars. Brianna, are you ready to play? Uh, You're a movie watcher. I think you'll be good at this. I don't think I will. <laughs> do I get options? I don't know. I don't think you do. Okay. I, I think we're going to have to go into the first question. Try your best. I will. You'll be good. First question. What do you think was the most popular answer amongst MUTV for the best picture? Uh, my guess is Oppenheimer. My sources say? Oppenheimer! Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah. That's Great what job. I voted for. <laughs> See? One for one already. Ready for the next question? Yeah. All right. Second question. With an overwhelming 92% of MUTV voters, who is their prediction for actor in a leading role? Um, so my guess, if Oppenheimer won Best Picture, it's probably going to be Killian Murphy for okay. Oppenheimer. Oh, he's smart. Yeah, it's also who I voted for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the 92%. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I am too. Let's see. Killian Murphy! Wow. What can I say? Maybe I'm a genius. Maybe. <laughs> Final question. Perhaps the hardest one of them all, okay? What percentage of MUTV members thought What Was I Made For from the Barbie movie would win Best Original Sound? Hmm. Well, I voted for it. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Did you vote for it? I don't know. You should tell me so it can help. <laughs> maybe I did, maybe I did. What it. Percentage? 50% chance that I did. Okay. But what percent chance did everyone? Uh, maybe it's 100%. 100? Maybe. Are you going all for all? No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's not 100%. Okay. Maybe it's like 90... Three? <laughs> okay. Maybe five? Well, well, you know what? Let's just go with 100. 100% 100 of people. She's locking in. Yeah. 100. Let's see. Damn. 83. <laughs> <laughs> My God, guys. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> no. <laughs> Brianna, thank you so much for playing Popular Predictions. After the Oscars air, we here at Hollywood Headlines will check back in to see which MUTV member predicted the most correct winners to named Cinema Connoisseur. Obviously, the highest title one can achieve in a lifetime. Well, that's all we have for tonight, but make sure to come back next week for the latest news in Hollywood. A big thank you to Brianna McHugh for coming to today's show. I'm Kamari Clark. Have a great weekend, Millersville.